Hello and welcome everyone. Today we're going over lesson 7.2. We're specifically doing the lab, which is all about how we can use the initialization function um, to help uh, assign our attributes and create objects in a much more helpful way. As you can see here, I have clap pests started right here at the top. And then I also have uh, five pets created just using the basic initialization of an object like you normally would, right? You just simply name the uh, object, the instance of that class. And then you also say is equal to pet and you use uh, the object much like you would a function, right? Here, I'm going to do something different where I'm going to define an, an initialization function um, that is going to allow me to create these uh, variables much easier, create these objects much easier. And the way I'm gonna do that is by taking an argument and assigning them to attributes. And right now, I have an attribute and I'm assigning it to the word animal, right? So self.animal is the attribute of the class. It belongs to the class itself. And animal is a variable that I haven't created yet. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this to my initialization line. So initialization, it's created just like a definition of a function, uh, but what makes it different is it's a keyword and it has these two underscores on each side. And that kind of gives it like an inherent uh, function of objects in Python, right? That's what it's telling you. And I give it the self argument, which is just a generic thing we do in Python for objects. And I also give it its first argument, animal. So if I wanted to assign an animal for this, I would say um, cat. And so now when I create pet one, I create it and I set it to have a default value, or I set it to have a, an initial value for the attribute called cat. The other uh, animals will not have this same uh, attribute already created, right? So if I print uh, pet one dot animal and I right click and run that, you can see it does not work because it is requiring positional argument animal. I think what I have to do right here is simply give it this, that gives it its initialization. So right here, I have animal is equal to these two quotation marks, which is simply telling the initialization function that it's not given anything, it should be blank, which as you can see, I don't give it in these functions right here. So I can print pet one dot animal, which is gonna tell me cat. And if I print pet two dot animal, it's just gonna give me nothing. It's gonna give me another blank space than we had before, right? It's telling me absolutely nothing, that's fine. I'm also going to create several other attributes. So what we wanna do and what the lab's guiding us to do is give all these different attributes, which are gonna be color, it's gonna be food, it's gonna be noise, it's going to be name. So when I create this, I can give it five arguments and that will correspond in order to the animal's uh, type, the color of the animal, the food the animal eats, the noise the animal makes, and the name of the animal. And the only thing I have to add is just this generic value that we want each one of these to start with and we also need to assign them down here to an actual attribute, right? So self.color is equal to color. The self.food is going to be equal to food, and that food needs to be a lowercase f because it is the variable right here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and finish off the rest of these from my notes. I'm gonna to tab this in. So as you can see here, we now have all these attributes that are assigned when you create a function or you create an object and um, it will give it these values automatically, right? So right now though, the difference is, is that I've given it cat, but I haven't given this first pet any other attributes. And I'm gonna do that right now. So for the animal uh, color, I'm gonna call it orange. For the animal food, I'm going to say kibble bits because that's what I think cats eat. I'm also going to say the animal makes the noise of purring and the animal's name is Toby. And you can see I'm printing out pet1.animal. I can also print out pet1. Uh, dot, let's say we just want the name, pet1.name. And I right click and run this. It's giving me the cat that his name is Toby. And we're gonna go ahead and delete this line for now. Uh, I wanna give attributes to the rest of these and I'm going to say that my second one is a dog the name of, or I'm sorry, the color of the dog is black, because remember I have to do these in the same order they show up in the initialization function. I'm gonna say his favorite food is steak, and I need to just delete some of that. The animal he makes, or the noise he makes is bark, so you can tell I can't talk at all today. And the dog's name is Elvis, and I'm going to go ahead and fill in the rest of these 
pet initializations, the pet objects uh, from my notes. So we have a cat named Salem, a salamander named Gertrude, and a pig named Wilbur. Now the second thing that this lab wants us to do is to create a function that takes in a list of pets and we'll print out all the different attributes and tell us what they are, right? We basically wanna do like the print we were doing earlier, except in a much more efficient way. And so to do that, I'm going to start by creating a pet list. And this pet list is going to be equal to uh, just a list of all the pets. And in the interest of making my life easy, again, there's no shame in copying and pasting, at least in my opinion. So you can see here, we now have a list of pets and I'm going to define a function that I'm going to call print attributes, and it's going to take in a object list. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loop through these objects. And I'm also going to loop through their attributes, right? But where do we draw these attributes from? Well, our objects actually have a very unique function that is very useful that's already pre-made right? We have our definition of an initialization function up here, but the secret to this is that the initialization function is always used anytime you create a class, even if you're not implicitly naming it, right? It already has this initialization function and we simply overwrote it. Down here, I'm going to say for attributes in obj dot underscore underscore dict. And what that does is this uses a built-in dictionary function, which is going to give us all the attributes of this object back in a dictionary format, which you should know because we've used them in our unit six. So for the attribute in object.dictionary, I'm going to say print attr. This is actually going to print the name of the attribute, right? It's going to print what it is. So not the uh, value we've given it. It's going to print out the uh, key. So animal or color or food or noise. That's just what the word will say. And then I'm also going to use another function, which is called get attribute that takes in a object. And my second argument is going to be the attribute itself. So it's going to tell me what the value is for the attribute and the objects that I've supplied. So if I call this function, I'm going to say print attributes. Oh, print attributes dot pet list and I'm going to run my code. And over here to the right, I have the list as it's been given. So here I've created pet one and it loops through that. So the animal is cat, the color is orange, it eats kibble bits, it makes the noise of a purr and its name is Toby. And then of course I go through the dog whose name is Elvis, the cat whose name is Salem, the uh, salamander whose name is Gertrude who hisses and a pig named Wilbur. And so that is how you do Lab 7.2. Thank you all very much for tuning in.